Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for the weekend. Yes, this is your weekend edition. So Friday, April 26th. Yes, Friday, April 26th through Sunday, April 28th. We are almost done with April, guys. Can you believe it? We are officially in Taurus season now. Um, May is coming. This is exciting. We're moving forward through the year, man. It's going quickly, even though it's been a really intense year <laughs> already. And we're only approaching May. It is, when you think about it, it is kind of going a little quick. Okay, so this is going to be your weekend edition. This is a general reading. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. I will get you all set up. My email is in the description box below. Also, energies are fluid and time is an illusion. So just because it's coming through this weekend doesn't mean it necessarily has to resonate for this weekend. Um, if whenever you're guided to watch this, you know, especially if it's after the date of the recording and release, then it's most likely a message that you needed to hear at that time. Yeah, please feel free to come back at any moment and rewatch these later. Go back into the archives and watch those. You may find something, if you feel guided to do it, do it. You may find something that will help you out in that moment. All right, guys? So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's see what we've got for the weekend. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend, Friday, April 26th through Sunday, April 28th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so as soon as I started, you know, connecting, plugging into the collective, I saw pink, and then I was seeing gold, and then I was seeing green, okay? So we've got unconditional love, we've got um, divine energy. Well, the, the unconditional love is pink, the divine energy is gold, but I often see gold um, I like to use gold as a color to represent gratitude. And then, <laughs> and then we also have green, which is healing, okay? Heart chakra healing, heart chakra awakening, expansion, just general healing of the body also, body, mind, and spirit actually, yes? All right. So for our weekend edition, please, spirit, please bring forward the best messages for us to serve the highest good and the highest good of all involved. Weekend edition, April 26th through April 28th. Best messages, please, spirit. All right, here we go, guys. Take a sip of my tea here. Okie dokie. Let's see what we've got. Oof. Okay. Weekend edition, April 26th through the 28th. Weekend edition, April 26th through April 28th. Friday, April 26th through Sunday, April 28th. Okay. Now the first card that's come out here that's fallen face up is the Seven of Wands, all right? Underneath the deck, you have the Queen of Pentacles. I'm getting a very stoic energy from this Queen of Pentacles here. Um, uh, there are a need for boundaries. I really feel like the big thing that's going on right now, especially with the Seven of Wands energy that's come out, and it is the only energy so far, other than the Queen of Wands, which is the overall energy underneath. I'm sorry, not the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Pentacles. That is the overall energy 
underneath the deck here, you have the Seven of Wands. So there's a need for boundaries. I feel like some of us or some of you may be coming to terms with a lack of boundaries from the, prep, from the past and where it may has led you up until this point. There is a bit of somberness of sorrow here in this Queen of Pentacles. I don't know. I, yo, I, we've all been here. We've been seeing a lot of numbers, right? 555 has been a specific one, big one. But also, I've been hearing crows like crazy lately. And I just heard some. I don't know if you heard it too. But anyway, um, yeah, stoicism is a big thing. Uh, lack of boundaries has been a thing in the past and it's it's like you're getting that hard lesson now oof okay wow all right so what we have here we have the king of wands five of swords strength in reverse all of those are in reverse six of pentacles king of cups three of pentacles ace of cups i'm gonna move this over Death and the Five of Wands. As you can see here, we have a lot of cards that are reversed. We have a lot of reversals here. We do have a lot of reversals here. And I'm trying to decipher what exactly it means, especially in terms of the cards that we do have that are upright. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to take all of our upright cards and I'm going to put them together because I feel like that's where the pain resides, but also that's where, well, no, the pain resides with all these reversals, but that's also where the lessons are coming through. Okay, the big one here we have is death which is change transformation. And it's interesting because I was just mentioning how I keep hearing crows all the time recently. Like within the last few days, I've been hearing them like crazy. Uh, there they go again. Um, and crows are synonymous with death. Um, they are often seen as a bad omen, but Death is just a transformation, okay? And there's a big transformation that's happening here. Now, let's start, let's start. This is our lesson up here, the top row. Seven of Wands, Death, Five of Wands, Three of Pentacles. All of these are upright. These are our lessons. Down here with all of these reversals, these are the circumstances by which we have come to learn or, or be, come to approach this lesson that we're learning here. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that there's only one feminine, um, official feminine figure here. And I don't mean the other cards that depict, um, that have feminine figures in them. I'm talking about the court cards because most of this deck is, is, is feminine in nature. The court cards, there are two masculines, the king of wands, the king of cups. There are, there is one feminine the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles is the subject of this matter. So either this could be you or this could be someone you're connected with or connecting with. Also, yes, connected with or someone at least that you have been connected to in the past or have associated with in the past, have had a past relationship, something like that. Keep in mind, guys, this is a general reading. Energies are fluid. So it can go either way, okay? Um, for the most part, the Queen of Pentacles is the audience here, for the most part, but it doesn't have to be that way, okay? Um, you actually could be, you could be represented by one of these kings here. It's entirely possible. Now, what is this lesson? Seven of Wands, boundaries, death, transformation. Five of Wands is conflict of interest, is uh, inner turmoil, is chaos, confusion, too many opinions in, like too many cooks in the kitchen, too many, too many spoons in the pot. Three of Pentacles, self-mastery, rebuilding. 
there is inner confusion there's inner turmoil here with the five of wands whatever it is you're dealing with it feels like you you may feel like you're never going to come out of it like you'll never be able to get past it that's the biggest thing um there's also confusion or inner conflict around the circumstances by which you have reached this point of view it's very much a push pull energy it's like well i always could have done better but then at the same time it's like you're looking at the circumstances as like well the circumstances were as they were and i was only reacting or living out through those circumstances by what i understood at that time and yet you're still there's still this energy of but i could have always done better like i didn't have to do it that way i didn't have to react that way i didn't have to choose to do that that this that and the other that is the inner conflict that i'm feeling the somberness the the stoicism that is mass that is uh, the mass the, the stoicism is masking this inner conflict here that is represented that i'm seeing in the queen of pentacles the somberness there is a lesson in boundaries here but it almost feels like it could be too late for that because the damage has already been done and it is wow um so now i'm getting down into the circumstances here and it's no surprise that these things have come out the way they have okay you either have two different scenarios or you have scenarios, well, okay, you do. There are, let me say that again. There are two different scenarios here, but it doesn't mean that you've only dealt with one or the other. You could have dealt with both, or it could have been one circumstance or one major situation that had all of this wrapped up into it doesn't have to be just one it could have been multiple what i'm trying to say is it's not it doesn't have to be that these are separate circumstances all of this could have been wrapped up into one situation into multiple situations it could have had elements of all of these different things or you could have dealt with either or let's start with the top king of wands five of swords strength all in reverse ego pride one-upmanship uh competition okay this is leo energy at its worst yes um and also i mean i don't wish i don't mean to bash masculine energies but the root causes of these circumstances are masculine energies but it's the twisted masculine energy that we all suffer from just like the twisted feminine energy so you could say that while the twisted masculine energy here was the root cause what helped another piece of that root cause could have been twisted feminine energy right okay ego manipulation narcissism with this king of wands here the king of wands energy i i do want to say though the saving grace is that with these being in reverse, it can mean that you have released this, you have let this go, you have moved on from it, albeit damage may have been done, but, but still, the fact of the matter is that it looks like a lot of this, this shit has been released, okay, um, and I do want to say that the reason why you do have death up here is because, yes, you have released these things and you have learned these lessons. So the hardest part of the situation really has been, we don't have the Ten of Swords here, but it does feel like the hardest part of the situation has come to pass and you've kind of learned to have these boundaries against this narcissism this emotional manipulation because then we get down to the second scenario you've got the six of pentacles the king of cups and the ace of cups all of this this is all kinds of emotional manipulation narcissism imbalance between give and take and especially with this again they could be a, com a combination of the two um but especially with down here i want to i want to let you know that this is not all your fault yes you have the inner conflict, especially when it comes to the Six of Pentacles, in the sense that, well, it, I knew the situation wasn't balanced. I knew I wasn't getting, I wasn't receiving what I was putting out in kind, but 
Relationships are a two-way street, and that's what the Six of Pentacles is really trying to say here. Even though the situation was imbalanced, and yes, you did have an opportunity to change it or remove yourself from it, number one, you have to recognize that you were at that time working from your own pain, your own trauma, your own lessons that needed to be learned, but also the situation could have been reciprocal, but obviously the other part of the other half of the party chose not to do it not to follow through with that so you cannot blame yourself for everything yes you can take responsibility for your role in the situation but you cannot blame yourself for every well you can but it's not helpful because it's not necessary it's not truthful okay i see with this king of cups energy i see someone offering love with the ace of cups right but only offering enough to get what they wanted from it and to not necessarily re reciprocate in the amount that they were taking, okay? I see someone that was doing just enough to get by, to get what they wanted. And this is absolutely connected to this King of Wands energy. There was a, maybe a Napoleon complex, um, uh, narcissistic tendencies, pros i don't know if you guys can hear it maybe i should open my window i'm gonna open my window because i don't know if you guys can hear the crows that are going nuts out. well they're not going nuts but do you hear them the crows <laughs> okay anyway you please let me know if you can hear those crows because they're they're really doing the thing right now <laughs> and i feel like it's significant so i want you guys to hear it but um so what were we talking about we were talking about this narcissistic situation but see here's the thing this is where compassion comes into play this is where the queen of pentacles kind of thrives because and I know, I know, I say that and still it's the compassion that has allowed some of this discrepancy to take hold, right? Um, the Queen of Pentacles is compassionate. She's understanding, she's giving, okay? She understands the trials and tribulations of life. So technically and naturally, she would understand or would be would have a greater time uh, being understanding of someone that's caught in these emotionally manipulative, emotionally immature situations with the King of Cups and also narcissistic and overly confident, overly egoic and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what helped you be in this position to begin with because you understood, you, but you were taken advantage of. And I'm not going to bash the people that are represented here by these two kings it doesn't have to be a man it can be a woman but it is still masculine and energy but i don't want to bash them but yes in the sense they did take advantage of it but that's mainly because they were coming from their own place of pain whatever that is there was especially for this king of wands there was a lack of strength there was a lack of self-belief okay and so that led to super combative situations the five of swords competition extreme ego narcissism narcissism is big right now with this spread here okay king of cups lack of emotional maturity lack of self-love ace of cups not knowing really how to reciprocate. Okay, I'm sorry, I gotta, <laughs> now I'm gonna close my window again because it rained and the cars are going by and it's loud. Any more crows? Anyway. Okay, so you have a toxic situation? Yes, of course, you have a toxic situation. But it's all meant for healing in the end, which I know it's it's like, well, shit, like that's great. But now I'm kind of stuck in this place where I don't want to be. And it's like, okay, 
there is always a way out. Always. If you can get yourself in it, you can get yourself out. Period. <laughs> okay? Don't lose hope, don't lose faith, and please don't be lose belief in yourself. All of this served as a lesson here for you to learn greater boundaries, but also to transform and learn greater self-mastery. The chaos represented by the Five of Wands, first of all, the fact that you have both the Five of Swords and the Five of Wands are here. To me, they're like best friends, okay? They're very similar energies. They often come out together. Um, but for you, the Five of Wands doesn't feel so bad, or for whoever this Queen of Pentacles is, the Five of Wands doesn't feel so bad. And check it out, that can be a man as well, okay? The Queen of Pentacles energy does not have to be a female. It, it's just feminine energy, right? So you could be a man that is embodying this Queen of Pentacles energy and learning these lessons while, if you're heterosexual, the woman that you were dealing with could, be, could represent the King of Wands energy, this masculine energy. Also, if you're homosexual, the, the other man, or for you, if you're a woman, the other woman could represent. It, do you get what I'm saying? Okay, great. The Five of Wands energy is chaos. It's confusion. It's differings of opinion. It's um, inner turmoil. But it's also the chaos of creation. So that's why this Five of Wands energy, even though, yes, it can represent, it does represent, um, uh, 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 Gosh, what is it? I just said it. Inner conflict. <laughs> it does represent inner conflict, but it also represents the chaotic energy that comes with a transformation represented by death here, okay? Okay. I think that's good for now. We're gonna get into the clarification section now, and I'm gonna deal with something a little bit different. I'm going to start clarification with the Tarot Illuminati deck. Um, and I'm going to use this deck to clarify this Queen of Pentacles energy with this top row and this lesson that this Queen of Pentacles is going through. Um, oh, I forgot to mention the King of Cups energy down here. This is Scorpio energy too. Could be any water sign. Could be any fire sign with the King of Cups and the King of Wands. It doesn't have to be, but... I, forgot, I wanted to say that while I was talking about it, and I forgot. Okay, so I'm going to use this deck to clarify this top row and the Queen of Pentacles. And then I'm going to use the Unicorn deck to clarify down here, yeah? We're going to start with the Queen of Pentacles. I'm give this three shuffles. For this Queen of Pentacles energy. Oh, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> I'm gonna do one more, just one more, for this Queen of Pentacles energy. Yeah. Actually, let's do five. Because it's change. You do have the Five of Wands here. This, there's change happening. So, last shuffle. Yep. Okay, excellent. So let's clarify this Queen of Pentacles energy. Please, Spirit, what's going on with the Queen of Pentacles right now? Just some clarification. That's enough, they say. Okay. Underneath the deck, oh, yes. I told you guys, the cycles come to an end, the world. And what the world is saying here is now is a time of assimilation. Now is a time to really get down to the nitty gritty and learn the lessons, okay? You've gone through, you have enough, so it's not really about learning the lessons, excuse me, I said that incorrectly. It's more about integrating the lessons that you've learned here. Integrating the situation that you've been through, seeing it through and through from top to bottom, how it started, where it led you, the circumstances that you felt and experienced during that cycle, and now coming to the end, how did it end? What did you learn from that? And how can you heal and move forward? Okay, how can you do better in the future? Holy moly, Queen of Pentacles. Holy moly, this is beautiful. Justice, Ace of Wands, Four of Swords. Okay, see look, 
regardless, and all of this fell kind of like, it doesn't matter, it's all up here. Justice is being served, Queen of Pentacles. And yes, you could say, okay, fine. I have reaped what I have sown, or I am reaping what I have sown. Justice, you could choose to look at justice in a defeatist sort of way, in a pessimistic sort of way, saying, well, I got what I deserved. But that's not what I'm feeling from this. The initial feeling that I got from justice was relief, was holy shit, it's over. Like, holy shit, I can heal from this now. I can move forward from my life. Uh, with, I'm sorry, I can move forward with my life and not have to deal with these kinds of situations again. And that is why, I'm sorry, and this is why I really feel that. Other than the fact that that's the energy that justice is conveying, Ace of Wands, moving forward, inspiration, a new idea, a new direction, okay? But you need to just rest for a bit. Four of Swords, like I said, this is still time, this is still a bit of a time period where you need to work on really assimilating, okay? That's what the Four of Swords is talking about. Integrating the lessons. like really understanding it through and through from top to bottom to really ensure that this does not happen again, that you really are closing out this karmic cycle, okay? We've been talking about that a lot. And I know many of you that watch um, my readings are on the Twin Flame journey. I mean, it's only, it's only natural. I've been on the Twin Flame journey myself and I start, that's, how, that's why I started my channel, really. I started doing Twin Flame readings, even though that's not, you know, everything that I wish to do with readings. It was a big, it was, it was a big part of why I started. Um, and we've been talking about karmic cycles and stepping off the karmic wheel for the past month, I'll say. Um, and this is another step of it. So this is, this is, and I'm, I'm saying that to say this is much more than just the twin flame journey. This is much more than just stepping off the karmic wheel of the twin flame journey. It's about everything in your life. That is what this twin flame situation really is here, is meant to help us rectify, or I'm sorry, reconcile. It's all of the discrepancies all that we've had in relationships, all of the ways that we didn't love ourselves unconditionally, all of the ways unconditionally, all the ways that we did not honor ourselves unconditionally. So this is why many of us that are on the twin flame journey that have really been experiencing and going through the bullshit <laughs> of it, the triggering and the subsequent healing that comes from it, we say to you, this is not a cakewalk and this is not about just being with a specific person. This is about learning to love yourself. And that's what you're coming to terms with as this Queen of Pentacles. Whoever this Queen of Pentacles is, that is what this person is coming to terms with. It's almost as if it's finally over or it's finally coming to an end, whatever that represents for you, however that resonates with you, okay? Now, let's get into the bottom half here. What has led to these, and I really want to say, I don't mean to speak ill of masculine energies. We all have masculine energies, we all have feminine energies, but look at what's here. It's the King of Wands and the King of Cups. Both of them are in reverse. And both of them are extremely manipulative when they're reversed. All of them are manipulative when they're reversed, but the King of Wands and the King of Cups is a big one for this collective, okay? Ego, pride, and emotional manipulation, okay? Here we go. Just three shuffles for these guys. And we're gonna start with the King of Wands. Just looking for some clarity between the King of Wands energy and the King of Cups energy. Last one. Starting with the King of Wands. Just some clarity on the King of Wands energy here and potentially the lessons that have been learned. Ooh. Interesting. Oh, <laughs> my deck is upside down. <laughs> okay. Um, 
You have the world in reverse, the Knight of Pentacles upright, and the Empress in reverse. And strength. Now, my deck was upside down as I was doing this, but strength is on the bottom of the deck, and strength is reversed here. Well, I can tell you, I can tell you that this King of Wands energy is still acting in the same way that it has been. The world is reversed. So there is resistance to releasing it and it's almost as if they're going around looking for, with the Knight of Pentacles here, they're looking for that Empress energy that's going to just feed their ego. The Empress, when reversed, can be a very smothered like energy, okay? Um, it feels like the parent that allows their child to run amok, doesn't teach their child discipline. Wow. The Knight of Pentacles, it's very interesting that the Knight of Pentacles has come out upright. This could be a good thing. And it's funny, I was looking for some clarification, but apparently we're getting an energetic update on this individual, whoever this is for you. It could be a fire sign, um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Leo specifically, because we do have uh, strength twice here. That is a Leo card and the King of Wands is um, also a Leo card. It's the fixed element of fire. Now this person either is slowly but surely healing from this um, and might be dealing with with um, issues with their mother. That what, That's what the Empress could represent. And so they might slowly but surely be healing from this. Um, the, the, the Knight of Pentacles is upright, but also they could be staying stuck or stagnant, um, stalling even with the Knight of Pentacles energy and not really trying to change, keeping it same old, same old, okay? Oh, wait, you know what? Yeah, since the deck was reversed, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna reverse them. So the Knight of Pentacles is in reverse here. It all still makes sense. But now with the world up right here, it looks like, yes, the situation is closed out. I'm hearing narcissism is being removed from your life, is an element that's being removed from your life. You're no longer having to deal with this, but that's because you learned. Okay, I'm definitely getting a new perspective here with this. You learned strength. You've learned to close out this cycle. You learned to honor yourself, to love yourself, to believe in yourself, right? And as the Empress here, you're not going to accept anything less than someone who recognizes that in you. And thus you're not working towards this any longer, Knight of Pentacles. It could also mean that this person could kind of see it in a similar way in the fact that, yeah, the situation may be over between the two of you, but that doesn't mean that they're changing much if at all. Okay. <laughs> I think, I wanna use another deck for the King of Cups. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use the Epic Tarot for the King of Cups energy.
for this King of Cups. Three shuffles here. Just for some clarity, please, Spirit. One more for this King of Cups energy. All right, kids. Let's see what we've got. Just some clarity for this King of Cups energy, please, Spirit. Ooh. Wow. Okay, well, the Eight of Swords. Holy moly. <laughs> That's enough. Okay. The Eight of Swords came flying out and fell off the table. Underneath the deck, you have the Eight of Pentacles. Holy moly, because the Six of Pentacles came out, reversed, and fell right on top of the Six of Pentacles reversed. Ah, the Eight of Swords did come out, but it's reversed here. Okay, that's epic. Oh, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you have the Ace of Books or the Ace of Wands, again. Twice. The Ace of Wands came out twice. Both upright. Hallelujah. Now, the Ace of Wands did fall on the Ace of Cups in reverse. So to me, this is saying you're writing a new chapter. You're writing a new book in terms of love. You actually have, in fact, found this Ace of Cups within yourself. And that's absolutely a big reason as to why you're even going through this to begin with. Knight. I'm not sorry, not Knight. Page of wands. It seems, and as this is falling on, on the King of Cups here, it seems that through this situation with this King of Cups, this person has inspired you to go within and understand why you, number one, have attracted this narcissistic cycle here, but also understand why this has even gone on for you. Do some self-discovery. And that's what the Page of Wands represents to me. Self-discovery, self-understanding, exploring oneself. Inquisit inquisitory nature. Inquisitive, excuse me, inquisitive nature. And then underneath the deck is the Eight of Pentacles. All right, so doing work to heal, to fix the situation. Now, you can see how both of these are connected, both of these situations. Spirit is trying to remind me that this doesn't necessarily have to be separate. In some cases, it is, definitely, but it's not always. Ultimately, these are connected in the fact that the situation is over. This cycle, this narcissistic cycle is over with the world, which has come out twice. You've learned, you've gathered inner strength. You've been doing the work. Strength, eight of pentacles. There is still a little more work to be done in the form of healing, yes. But you finally released yourself from this cycle. You've gotten to the bottom of it, and now you can write a new chapter in your life, or you can just start writing a whole new book. Yeah? That's beautifully excellent, guys. Okay, so we're going to close the reading now, and we're going to stick with the Lightworker Oracle. This deck has really been resonating this week. So I want to keep with it, yeah? Um, we give this three shuffles. And then we'll see what our closing message is for the weekend. Alrighty, guys, best message, please, Spirit, to close out this reading for our weekend edition. Thank you so much. Thank you so, there it is. We've got card number 12, Eternal Now.
within you is great strength and courage. However, just because you can manage to keep going when you are drained or stressed, it doesn't mean you have to do so. You are encouraged by your higher guidance to request assist assistance in letting go of tension within your mind and body. You will gain energy through this release and perhaps even see things in a new and more optimistic light. Shifting into a more present present, relaxed, and enjoyable state of being will help you overcome the past and successfully create your future. Dear one, have your thoughts become trapped in the pain of the past? Have they been drifting towards possible futures? If too much of your energy is pulled away from the present moment, you diminish the power you have to create with what your heart desires. Creation doesn't happen in the past or in the future. It happens in the here and now by the choices you make in each moment. Even now, in reading or hearing this message, you are choosing to be present, to bring your energy into the eternal now, stimulating the law of attraction into action. As you relax in this moment, trusting that the past is over and the future shall be truly wonderful, you can more easily energize your dreams, visions, and heartfelt desires. The universe believes that you are deserving of a spiritual gift. To accept the gift in whatever form it takes, you will need to be present to have enough stillness of mind to recognize it. You'll need to have enough inner peace to accept it, to take it inside where it can nourish, inspire, and heal you. The form of this gift will be perfect for you, and the way that it comes shall be perfect too. It is being orchestrated by divine timing now. It will assist you to take the next step on your soul journey successfully. Your gift might be a piece of guidance, an inner knowing that changes your outlook permanently. It might help you truly know in your heart that your divine destiny is already unfolding and your spiritual success is inevitable. It is not a question of if, only a matter of when. It's so funny because I was going through my own stuff yesterday and that phrase came through. It's not a question of if, Eric. It's just a matter of when. Oof. Yes, hunty. Your gift might be an amazing opportunity that comes out of the blue. It could be a meeting that will prove significant to your unfolding life path. It could be a new relationship or a new connection with a community. It might be a life-changing teaching, a deeply healing dream, or an actual object. Spirit is unlimited in its willingness and ability to give to you. You need only be open to receive, and you do so by bringing yourself back to the present moment. Stillness of mind and inner peace are only possible when you are present in the eternal now. This is where you will find what you are seeking. So let the past be done. Allow the future to take care of itself. Center your awareness in this moment. You are safe. You are breathing gently now. You are here where you belong at exactly the right time. All things serve your greater good. Nothing is wrong. You are doing a fantastic job. All is in process. In this moment, there is just the peace and comfort of the eternal now. Relax, trust, be nourished, four of swords. Yes, the past is over the world twice. Yes. If you have been worrying about the past or the future, this oracle comes with guidance to let it be. All is working out just as it is meant to. Even the things you don't quite understand or find hard to accept. In time, you will know the perfection of all that is happening in your life. You'll feel so lucky, blessed, grateful, and truly loved. For now, however, it is enough to just be here and breathe. And I just saw 444 on the counter. <sighs> All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Monday morning. Yeah. Take care. Mwah! Bye.